Hello students, we are solving the IB Math EA AGEL past paper questions and currently we are solving the IB Math EA AGEL May 2023 paper 2 time zone 1 past paper. Today we will be solving the question number 6 of this paper and you will be getting the links to all the previously solved questions of this paper and of the other papers in form of playlist in my channel NS Online Math Tutoring Classes. So without any further delay, let us start answering question number 6, the maximum mark is 7. Consider Z equal to cos 11 pi over 18 plus I sine 11 pi over 18. Subpart E's question is find the smallest value of N that satisfies Z to the power of N equal to negative I where N belongs to the set of positive integers it is containing 4 marks. Okay, so find. Z to the power of n should be equal to cos 11 pi over 18 plus pi sine 11 pi over 18 to the power of n and applying the de Moivre's theorem we can write this as cos 11 n pi over 18 plus i sine 11 n pi over 18 okay and this should be equal to negative i given fine now they are saying we have to find the smallest value of n and n is a positive integer okay so we are seeing minus i so it is a imaginary number the real part of the complex number is missing that is equal to zero the real part is equal to zero the so the cos part will be equal to zero and the sine part will be equal to negative one that means which implies cos 11 n pi over 18 is equal to zero and sine 11 n pi over 18 is equal to negative one Okay, so now when can this happen? We know that cos pi by 2 is equal to 0, cos 3 pi by 2 equal to 0. Okay, so but if we take cos pi by 2 and if we equate this 11 n pi over 2 uh, over 18 equal to pi by 2, that can be done because cos pi by 2 equal to 0, but sine pi by 2 is not equal to negative 1 sine 3 pi by 2 is equal to negative 1. Sine pi by 2 is not equal to negative 1. So we have to take the value of the angle so that both of the parts are satisfied. The cos part is satisfied as well as the sine part is satisfied. So for if we take the angle as pi by 2, cos pi by 2 equal to 0, that is fine. But sine pi by 2 is not equal to negative 1, so we cannot take pi by 2. Coming to 3 pi by 2. Because cos 3 pi by 2 is again equal to 0 and sin 3 pi by 2 equal to negative 1. So both the cases are getting fulfilled, satisfied. Okay, so we can try 3 pi by 2. Okay, first case, let me write it over here. Three pi by 2. So 11 in pi over 18 is equal to 3 pi by 2. This gives us the n value as 3 pi by 2 times 18 over 11 pi. And the pi's will be getting cancelled. This get cancelled and it will be n equal to 27 over 11. It is not a positive integer. It is not an integer. Positive or negative is decided later on. So we cannot take 3 pi by 2. What if we have the, okay, I have to come to this side. So it is second case equal to, what should it be? If I take the 3 pi by 2, this is the, maybe the unit circle. And I'm starting over here and I have come to this point, 3 pi by 2. Okay. And I'm seeing that 3 pi by 2 is not working. Then what do we do? I'll be taking another revolution. 
So it is 3 pi by 2 plus 2 pi. So let us see 3 pi by 2 plus 2 pi. 2 pi can be written as 4 pi by 2 equal to 7 pi by 2. Okay. So 11 in pi over 18 is equal to 7 pi by 2. Doesn't work because n should be equal to 7 over 2 times 18 over 11. Doesn't work. n is not an integer. Okay. So what can be the third case? Again, I'll be completing another revolution. So it is 7 pi by 2 plus 4 pi by 2 equal to 11 pi by 2. And 11 in pi by 2, I am coming to the same place. So the cos part has to be equal to 0 and the sine part is equal to negative 1. Okay. So, 11 in pi over 18 is equal to 11 pi over 2. I think it works so because n will be equal to 11 over 2 times 18 over 11. These two will be getting cancelled and I'll be having the n value as 9. Okay, so this is the smallest positive integer value that n can have. Okay, so we have completed answering question of subpart A. Coming to subpart B, hence or otherwise describe a single geometric transformation applied to z on the argon diagram that results in z to the power of 10, it is containing 3 marks. Okay. Um, because we are not so much familiar with the radius, you can work with the radius, no problem. Or else, you can convert this to degrees, 11 pi over 18. Okay, so let me let me do my working for the subpart B over here. Okay. First of all, I am converting this angle to degrees. And I know pi radians equal to 180 degrees. So, what will the 11 pi over 18 radians be equal to? It will be equal to 11 pi over 18 and it will be 180 degrees divided by pi. Okay, you can use your calculator. This is a paper two question. So, you can use your calculator definitely. So, this is equal to 110 degrees. 11 pi over 18 is equivalent to 110 degrees. And of course, the what is the modulus? If I have to write this in modulus argument form, what will it be? It will be, the modulus will be 1. And uh, I'm writing it in cis form. So, it is 11 pi over 18. Okay. So, if I had to draw it in the Argon diagram, how will it look like? The modulus is 1. So, the there will be the unit circle, maybe. This is just a rough sketch, okay. Assume this to be a unit circle and the angle is 110 degrees. Instead of having 11 pi over 18, because I cannot uh, plot the 11 pi over 18 radians, so it is better to take it in degrees, 110. And this first quadrant, 0 to this is pi by 2. So 90 degrees and this will be maybe 20 degrees. Okay, so this one is. 110 degrees. Okay, so this is the Z. Okay, and this part is 20 degrees. Okay, 
and now we come to c to the power of 10 or z to the power of 10. Obviously, the angle will get multiplied by 10 using the de Moivre's theorem. Okay, so z to the power of 10 will be equal to 1 cis. Therefore, z to the power of 10 will be equal to 1 cis 11 uh, or 110 pi over 18. Okay, and I have to multiply this 110 degrees by 10 also. So it becomes equal to equivalent degrees is 110 pi over 18 is equivalent to 1100 degrees. Okay. So I'll be starting obviously always I start from this point and I'll be completing revolutions. See, first is 360. I'm working with the degrees. 360 degree for the first revolution, 360 degree for the second revolution, the total is 720. If I add, let us see if I can complete three revolutions. If I add one more 360 degrees, what do I get? It is 1080, less than 110, um, 1100 degrees. Okay, sorry. So it is 1100 degrees. So how much is remaining after three revolutions? I come back to this place. How much is remaining? It is only 20 degrees. Clear? So, therefore, maybe this is the position of z to the power of 10. And this part is equal to 20 degrees. Of course, these are positive angles. So, we are moving in the counterclockwise direction. Okay, so now we have to give a single geometric transformation when applied to z brings us to the z to the power of 10. z is over here at this point and z to the power of 10 is over here. Okay, if I just rotate these two in the clockwise direction by an angle of 20 degrees about this origin 20, uh, sorry, uh, 0. We will be getting this coinciding with the this line, the imaginary line axis, and this will be coinciding with the real axis. And the angle between the real and the imaginary axis is 90 degrees. Okay, so therefore, this is 90 degrees. In case you draw this figure, I don't think you have to. Uh, explain anything. Yeah, I'm drawing this 90 degree angle as well. But in case you want to uh, clarify, use algebra, you can do that as well. For the z, it was 110 degrees. Okay. So z to z to the power of 10 is equal to 110 degrees minus this is only 20 degrees. So, this is equal to 90 degrees. Okay. Therefore, transformation required is rotation of 90 degrees clockwise about the origin, okay? So, this is the answer for the subpart B. Fine. So we have answered this question completely. Thank you for watching. I am Nilanjana Sanyal. I am an online IB Math E, SL, and HL level tutor. I teach students from both within India and outside India. And I offer both one on one and small group online tutoring services to my students. In case you are liking my explanations, please do give this video a like and please do subscribe to my YouTube channel. 
in case you have not subscribed to my channel till now. It will be motivating me to make more math videos for me. And we meet again very soon in our next session. We will be solving the next question of the same paper. Till then, bye.